This land indicators is very important for various reasons. First reason is that uh, we are in a world where 70 percent of population are, you know, dreaming to get any security. And as you may saw it already, you know, we have a dominance of customary land right. So meaning that the coverage of the land ownership system is too small compared to the all need we have globally speaking in terms of tenant security. These indicators will bring us and give us opportunity to track progress made on addressing the issue of tenant security. The second point is at the political level, because these indicators as part of the SDGs is a global commitment from member states. We commit themselves now to improve tenant security for both you know, vulnerable women, including even youth. So it means that they need to take appropriate policies and legislation and uh, appropriate discussion, stakeholders, consultation, uh, to make sure at least we have uh, whatever we need, you know, to uh, advance this global agenda. Uh, the third point is more about investment and building evidence on how far are we going in addressing the issue of tenant security. I know you have been investing a lot uh, on issue of tenant security for years, but how we can measure our progress. I think the same discussion we are having was with the voluntary guideline. And this indicator is an opportunity as well to build evidence and have a track record on how much we are, we are doing as a global communities, as a donors, and as a implementing agencies in fulfilling the need for community in accessing to tenure security. The role of the custodian agencies is a bit diverse because uh, you may know it, it is a UN-led process uh, which is give a mandate to UN agencies at least uh, as well to lead on these indicators. What does it mean when you talk about leading on these indicators? First of all, it's about you know, developing methodology. We are talking about metadata to prove that this indicator is definitely being measured or is measurable in the fact that it can require, meet the requirement to be reclassified from three to two or from two to one. So the role of the agencies as well is about consultation with various stakeholders involved on land issues, but also make sure at least we are liaising with national statistical offices, because at the end of the day it's a national-led process, and the custodian agencies should you know assist uh, government and uh, land agencies and national statistical offices to build the capacity, but also to establish you know reporting mechanism uh, from where now we can justify you know how much progress has been made in informing this indicator. This indicator is a level of tier three. What does it mean tier three? It means that there is no methodology already defined and there is no data, existing data. So for this indicator to move from tier three to tier two, we need to develop this methodology and do some pilot survey or administrative data to prove that there is already some existing evidence on these indicators. Uh, the next step will be to move to tier one. At tier 1 we're there, I think that's where the reporting mechanisms start now. And I think so, to move to tier 1, we need to justify 50% of countries are able to report on these particular indicators and from regional and 50% of population as well are report because this indicator contains this desegregation as well in terms of population and gender aspect as well. So overall, to summarize, I think so right now we are moving to the process of a request for reclassification from tier 3 to tier 2. And after this as well, we need to work it out to get it in tier one. Desaggregation is very important in the fact that the indicator should reflect different components of society. As long as tenure security is concerned, the so first dimension is what type of tenure are we talking about. On terms of desegregation, we have the administrative data because this indicator is talking about legally documented right. The second element of the degradation is a perception element. So it means that those who perceive the right sequel is not necessarily getting a legal document on that. The other element of the desegregation is gender element as well. I think so when we are reporting, we should make sure how percentage of women as well has access to tenure security. And uh, all this now, I mean, as it's up here on the formula, should be related to the population globally because it's not about reporting on parcels, it's not about reporting uh, on surface, on, but it's about reporting on number of population a percentage of population. This is a different element of the desegregation which is important to know when we are dealing with these indicators.